Hello, uh, my name is Heidi. I am 35 years old and I've been living in my Ram Promaster 2014 since July of 2021. Here we are inside of the van and I'd love to just show you around a little bit. Um, so we can start here in the kitchen area. Uh, this entire cabinet section here was purchased from Ikea. So I put this together, but it did come good to go. And we had this space uh, measured out um, after the bed was already installed. And so this really just fit here perfectly and it was very easy to install. It's just screwed into the floor under here. These are baby gate locks or something like that. Um, they're just, you know, from Target or Walmart, very cheap. And there's one there and also one here. Um, there have been times where I've been driving down the road and of course these cabinets will fly open. But the longer I've been on the road, um, I remember to latch these. And as long as they're latched, then there's no problem at all. In this cabinet here is where I keep my fridge. Uh, this fridge is from Amazon. It's a 20 quart fridge. It is just a refrigerator, does not include a freezer. I think that if I was traveling with somebody, this fridge would be too small. But for just one person, it's been really great for me. It is plugged in over here on the Jackery. And I guess I can say that this fridge is really amazing because my Jackery is always, almost always full at 100%. I feel like the fridge does not take a ton of power. So here, I don't have many bags right now, but I just have, um, you know, trash bags for the garbage can. I have protein powder here, um, very exciting stuff. I have fire starters, more water bottles, really random things back here that I actually do use from time to time, so it's nice to have there, but also I, realized that I do have some storage here that I could possibly put to better use. And so that's something that when I am back um, at my family's house over the summer that I will probably check into. And the other side of the storage here is where I have all of my water situation. I do have a five gallon water jug here um, of fresh water. And this is my gray water. Uh, it is a three gallon um, tank of gray water. I wanted to go with a smaller option for gray water. Um, I would rather get rid of it when there is less to deal with as opposed to when I have just a bunch of um, gray water to um, find a spot and everything to get rid of it. I did buy for the sink here. It's just a five gallon water pump from Amazon. It's worked out really well. It comes with a lot shorter of a hose, so I did have to go to the hardware store and find um, this pipe that would um, extend the length of it. Um, I really enjoy the water, how it's all set up. It's easy. I don't have to move too much stuff to switch it out. I mean, there's a few cleaners and bottles here, but other than that, like I just put them over here to the side and it's really not a problem at all. It's been working out really well. And here I just have some hooks on the inside of the cabinet. Um, just, you know, I do have a charger holder here. I have pot holders, a fly swatter, a broom, you know, all the fun stuff here. All right, and we do have one last section of the cabinet here, and it's just the little pull-out drawer right here. Uh, this is kind of a mess, um, but I use all of the things in here pretty much on a daily basis, so it's all very convenient for me. And this countertop did come with the whole cabinet situation from Ikea. We did cut a um, hole here for the sink. And I have to say that if there's one thing about the van that I would change and that I probably again will change this summer is getting a bigger sink. Um, when I was researching my sink options, I did find, I found a video and it had all of the components listed and I just kind of clicked everything that was in the box and I ordered it all from Amazon. It all arrived perfectly and it all fits together perfectly, um, but the sink is so small. I do have just a basket of, again, items that I use frequently here. Um, storage is something that in a van you're going to have a fine amount of, but for me at least, I'm still finding myself having things on the counters even though I try not to. Um, so having this basket just keeps everything contained. Um, books that I'm reading, more water bottles, paper towels, binoculars, bear spray, hand lotion. Uh, there's a big light here. And back here there are pens and markers um, for journaling which I'm trying to be better at. 
So these upper cabinets here, um, I'm kind of proud of how they turned out only because this is something that I really just went to the store and bought a lot of random things and put them together. And I kind of like the way that they turned out. They're definitely kind of random. So it's two shoe racks from, I believe Menards. They were like $12 each that we turned upside down. And so they're just, you know, we did screw them into the back wall here, but also these frames are helping these to be held up as well. Also, when you're driving around in a van, if you have anything anywhere, it's going to fall when you're driving. So I went to uh, a garden store and I bought these, um, they're wooden sticks to help hold up a tomato plant or something like that. And I had to sand them down because they were super rough. And then I stained them and then I nailed them into the shoe racks so that things do not fall down. So I had been living and working in Chicago for over 10 years. Um, working in the corporate world, um, being surrounded by a lot of people um, very interested in climbing the ladder and just getting to that next step. And um, that was something that I was seeing happening around me. And I don't want to say that I didn't want that for myself, but there did come a time where I just looked around at my life and realized that each year that would pass by, nothing was changing for me. Um, I loved my friends and I loved my family and I loved the city that I was living in. But when I would look back on the past year, it was just like I was doing the same thing every day, waking up and going to a nine to five job um, Monday to Friday and living for the weekend. And uh, you know, in the winter time, even on the weekend, I'm just sitting inside because it's cold outside. Uh, the pandemic happened and all work re went remote. I went back and stayed with my parents in the suburbs and I was going on, I ended up going on a lot of walks, which I feel like a lot of people during the pandemic, that's something that we did. Um, and I was listening to podcasts. I actually don't even know how I came across Van Life Podcasts, to be honest with you. I think that it was, I was watching some Van Life stuff on YouTube and then I think um, they started talking about Divine on the Road. And then I got into women on the road. Um, and I think there's a podcast called Van Life Podcast. Um, and I just started listening to those as I was out walking for honestly like a couple hours every day. And I just kind of thought to myself, I think I could actually do that. So while building out the van, I had told my dad who helped me with a majority of this that I wanted a wall here to help separate the kitchen area from the driving section. Um, he really did not understand that, but I'm actually really happy that I have this little piece of paneling here. It does help to separate the space a little bit. And while I was traveling, I started buying stickers and I figured that this would be a good spot to put them. Um, so I do try and travel to a lot of national parks. It just gives me a means and a direction of ways to go while on the road. And so I've been buying stickers at the national parks and just different cities and towns that I've been to. Um, and I have a few just other random postcards up here. Um, above the driver section here um, is a really prime spot for storage. I have a lot of my cooking um, pots and pans up here, a lot of my, um, all of my coffee stuff, my butane stove is up here. Um, I really enjoy these little appliances that I will again plug into the Jackery. This is supposed to be a burger maker, but I really make everything in here in terms of like, I make pancakes in here, I've made eggs in here before. Um, I mean, anything you wanna put in here is really fine. Here towards the front of the van is my clothes chest. Um, we did find this at a Salvation Army store. I think it was like um, maybe $12 or something. Um, we had to make some modifications to it. As you can tell, this part here is rounded. We cut this off. Um, I did have this positioned over here and it's moved now. Um, anyway, 
So we did paint it white first. I say we as my mom did help me do that. And then I painted it this green color. Um, the white was fine and nice, but it just got dirty quite easily. And I have a lot of other white things in here. And so I just wanted something a little bit different. Um, but it's been working out really well. Um, it's pretty nice and sturdy, I would say. And I have these baskets here from Target. Um, I have three that are this size, and then I have one larger basket um, for shirts and things like that. Um, I will say that this doesn't always say stay perfectly um, organized, but I really do try and um, keep things folded and keep things in their space so that I know what I have that's clean. And my dirty clothes bag um, is actually just right here behind the driver's seat. So, all right, and here just below the bed, we do have another storage situation going on. On top here, you can see that I have the Jackery. It's the Explore 1000, almost one of the largest ones that they have. The reason that I went with this Jackery is because I did not want to deal with the electrical situation. I'm just gonna be honest and say that. Uh, again, a theme throughout this, um, throughout this is that I was just, I put a lot of work into the van, but there were some spaces where I don't want to say I cut corners, but I kind of took the easier route. Um, I knew that this was an option and I think it was more money up front than doing all the electric myself. But I, again, it's something that I wouldn't change. Um, this thing is so easy to tell. You can see exactly how much power you have. Um, I have been in a sunny climate lately, but also I've been in not so sunny climates and this thing really holds up so well. So I'm really happy with it. Um, I do have 200 watts of solar up on the roof and that is being connected here by this cord. Um, I'm not gonna pretend to know too much about it. Um, thank you to my dad who um, handled all of the situation with the solar, power, solar panels and with the roof rack. Um, he kind of racked his brain and figured out how to get all that stuff up there. I did help, um, but I just did what he told me. And to be honest, um, here we are, you know, just using this handy little um, situation here. So um, this storage space here is actually a three compartment um, storage space that we cut off the last um, compartment for um, in order for this to fit here. Uh, this section here is actually the very last of my clothes storage. This is sweatshirts and um, some sweatpants that are bulky and they don't fit over here. And so this has been good. Um, really in the, in the summertime, I don't even use this section too much, too much really just in, except for sweatshirts. Um, but otherwise, you know, like I said, it's sweatpants and just um, more bulkier items. And here I have my food storage. This has been working pretty well um, for my food storage. It's not the hugest um, space for it. Um, sometimes after I go to the grocery store, I will just have a bag sitting in this over here on the floor for a couple days until everything can fit in here. But really, um, you know, it's just me out on the road and this has been a pretty good food storage solution for me. Not that I was trying to be someone that I wasn't, but there's such an expectation um, when you're living and working and um, just doing all the things that you're supposed to be doing. Like this was, you go to college and you graduate and then you go, you get a job and you climb the ladder or you get married and you have kids and then you go move back to the suburbs. And you know, there's that whole route that I thought that I was on and I was. But then when I decided and realized that I could do something different and I could do something for me, once I jumped into this, I just, I feel like I, like this is more who I am. Am I gonna live in a van forever? Like, no, probably not. But I think that this experience, like you're never gonna get it otherwise. And living this experience right now for me is gonna change my life forever and for the better because I really do, I just said it, but I feel more myself now than I have the last 10 years. And I think that's really something to be said for, for this lifestyle. And also, if you wanna do something, you can. Um, I think that I just had so many doubts about it, but once you throw yourself into it and you have the right mindset, things are gonna be hard. And yeah, you know, cooking on a tiny one burner butane stove that you have to make sure you even have enough butane for on a daily basis and 
brushing your teeth in a tiny sink with a five gallon jug of water, you know, it's not normal. Like it's actually really not normal. Um, but all of the positives that come out of doing this and all of the amazing things that I've gotten to see and experience make all of those other silly little things like a butane stove, like just make it that much better. It just makes it all worth it. And so I think that I really do say like, and I talk about this with some friends that I've met on the road. It's just like, you're gonna take the small inconveniences and deal with it and learn how to deal with it in the best way so that it's not an inconvenience in order to have all these amazing experiences so it's gonna be worth it. So right now I am sitting on my full-size mattress. Um, this bed was built this direction in order to accommodate me and sometimes someone else. Um, so I, if I'm laying down, I can just barely fit if my feet are flat against the wall and my head is on this wall. Um, but when it's just me, I can spread out more. I'm very comfortable. This is a super comfortable bed no complaints there um, again like I said I've had a few friends you know stay here with me and it's been fine um, to sleep two people in here again for something full-time wouldn't enjoy it I'm just gonna be honest but to have people over and travel with me it's been great to have the option to have two people sleep in here I also do have the max air fan here just above the bed on the really hot nights, it definitely helps to control the temperature more in here. I do have a small side window over on the sliding door as well, um, which can pull the air from outside and create a little bit of a breeze. I'm not going to say it feels like, you know, air conditioning, especially when I'm laying down. You know, it doesn't, I'm not going to say that it cools it down a million percent, but it helps to get some airflow in here, especially, yes, just on those warm days and the warm nights. I'll, of course, keep this on like all night long and just um, it, it really does help um, with the airflow in here. The building of the bed was something that my dad also um, had a lot of input in. The back of my van is actually raised a little bit from the tires underneath. And so we had to figure out how to make the bed even when the van itself is not level. Um, so my dad helped me out a lot with this bed. Um, so he helped me build it. And he honestly did a lot of research um, by watching van build, bed builds on YouTube. And um, we found the slats from Ikea and we just saw that other people did that. And also I think that if you just have plywood underneath your mattress, I think there's issues with um, condensation and stuff like that. And so I think just to get a little bit more airflow through there. And also the slats are just, um, I feel a lot less heavy than um, anything that would um, just kind of weigh it down a little bit more back here. Um, the slats have been great um, for me, no issues. The bed has been very sturdy and just, um, yeah, it's it's been working out really well. So very happy with it. All right, so here we have the garage section of the van. Um, this provides so much storage, so I'm super thankful to have it. I have a couple bins towards the back here. One of them is kind of full of more winter things, um, some flannel sheets, more blankets, a winter coat, um, more uh, gloves and things like that. I have this bin here. It has a tent, a sleeping pad, some more outdoorsy type things. Um, bucket full of shoes. I have some rollerblades because I actually really wanted to get a bike in here. It didn't happen this time, so I brought rollerblades as a backup. I can say I've used them a few times, um, but I want to find some more spots to use them, so we'll see. Um, I have a couple of camp chairs here. I have my hiking bags underneath, and um, some of the stuff towards the front there can be accessed from the inside, so I can just reach, reach back and grab what I need. Um, as you can see here, I actually do have a Mr. Buddy heater as well. I have to admit that I don't use it often. There have been a couple times where I've pulled it out and turned it on for a couple hours. I've been warned a lot about them. I, it's just, I use it sometimes. As you can see, I have another five gallon water jug. Um, so I don't just have the one up there. I like to have um, at least one full at all times. Um, so this one needs to get a fill up um, soon. And other than that, you can tell I just have some other things thrown under here, like a yoga mat. Here I have some hiking poles, other chairs. Um, I have a shovel 
knock on wood, I don't need to use that to get stuck out of sand or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's been great to have this space for sure um, for all of the extras that just are not going to fit anywhere else. I think the reason that I did push forward and that I went for what I wanted to do, even when I was pretty nervous about it, is that I was excited for a challenge. I knew going into this that everything wasn't going to be easy. And I knew that I was going to have really hard times um, doing this, but I also wanted to push myself. I kind of wanted to see that, hey, when hard things happen, like how am I going to handle it? And I think that because I was kind of in such a stagnant area for many of the past years, um, things, things being easy in my home life and in my work life and in my social life, like, I just wanted something to challenge myself. And I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that in terms of I wanted to put myself through a bad situation. I'm saying like I wanted to see what was out there and see, even though it seems scary and hard, that I could do it. And so finally taking that jump and saying that I was going to do it, it's kind of like if, you, if you're scared of something, you should do it. And I'm not saying that in a bad way, I'm saying that in a good way. I think if you're going to do something like living this lifestyle, you're not just going to be like, oh, no problem, like to every little thing. Like there might be a few things where you're like, oh yeah, I could handle that. And that part is fine. That part is fine. But I think there's always going to be something that you're going to be a little bit weary about, but that's okay too. If you're scared, you can still make those jumps. As long as you do come up with a little bit of a game plan, I'm not saying you have to have everything figured out and everything written down, but as long as you come up with a little bit of a game plan and you get your mind right, it can still be scary, but you can still push yourself and you can still like get over that hump. And once you do it, like you're just going to be so glad. And if something, if something scary or hard does happen and you, you have to make a lot of accommodations to fix that. Also, don't make it think, don't let that make you think that's, that it's a failure either because everything's a learning process and it could go in a bad way, but the way that you respond to it is going to um, build you up even stronger. So thank you for watching this. If you would like to follow me along on Instagram, my name is Heidi's.van and the link will be down below.